In a world of glitz and glam, flashing lights and screaming fans, most people are unaware of the war that rages behind the scenes. And that war includes your favorite artist and your favorite songs. This is The Dark Side of Songwriting. Hosted by Naeem Edwards. Welcome to The Dark Side of Songwriting. I am your host, Naeem Edwards. All hail the king of music, the king of music business, Michael fucking Jackson, hands down. I mean, when we talk about music, you know, one of the original reasons that I even wanted to start this channel is because I wanted us to have a repertoire of not only lessons, things to look out for, preventatives and tips and stories and stuff, but like we had to have a repertoire of our battles and our wins, especially when those wins transcend what we're used to and pretty much the God of popular music, Michael fucking Jackson. So before we get into Michael Jackson versus Paul McCartney, I just want to say this, like no matter what you might've thought about Michael Jackson or what you might have believed and whatever, right? Hands fucking down. Nobody's doing it like Michael today. Nobody. Not even fucking close. You know, we, it's, it's hard to even give a disclaimer because it's, it's just more interesting. So let's just get into why I decided to do Michael versus Paul McCartney first. And at the end of this, I'll actually tell you what we're going to do next because it's going to be three different sections that we cover in the lessons that we can learn and just how crazy this shit was. So I'm not going to start at the beginning of Michael's life. That's not significant to this portion of how fucking crazy, like phenomenal beyond wise, just so goddamn like when, when I just, I'm so excited right now because Michael Jackson is fucking everything the artist should aspire and strive to be point blank period so let's start off when mike and paul they were actually friends so if you don't know who paul mccartney is he's from the beatles and basically michael jackson went up against the beatles we all know about or you might not know that he purchased the beatles catalog but it's so much deeper than that so they were friends they actually were friends and they was cool michael jackson was raised by a man who was not playing all of that buddy buddy friendship michael jackson was as cutthroat as business can get he was pro black artist ownership he learned from not only his father he learned from the people who came before him people like james brown sam cook aretha franklin you know like michael jackson wasn't no slouch michael jackson wasn't no bitch give a fuck how many wigs a nigga put on this was a fucking genius there's a quote right before like so michael jackson purchased the beatles catalog with a whole bunch of other shit when he was 25 i don't want that point to be lost because just think about being 25 years old and having this story there's a direct quote from michael jackson said one day i'm gonna own all your music he looked at Paul McCartney looked him in his face and said one day I'm going to own all your music now why is that important one because it fucking happened but you can imagine being an artist standing in another person's face and letting them know like like Michael Jackson stood there and let you know I'm gonna own you I'm going to buy every single asset you have and it's going to belong to me and john lennon did not take that shit serious he he thought it was funny you know and it's just like your homeboy saying man i'm gonna take that shit from you i'm gonna take that hoe from you you know you it's funny until you see them together 
and this shit comes to fruition and it ain't so funny no more. So let's talk about the war because I'm just no fluff, no fillers on this shit. Let's talk about the war. Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson. Now keep in mind, Paul McCartney was older, but, or they might, they, they was around time, a little bit older. Mike is 25, but Mike is a businessman from the Quincy Jones School, from goddamn, you know, like, Paul said, to be someone's friend, then buy the rug they're standing on. Remember, I just said that it ain't so funny when this shit actually happened. Mike had a rebuttal and said, Paul and I both learned about business and the importance of publishing, royalties, and the dignity of songwriting. Powerful. And why is it so powerful? Because even in today's time, a lot of artists don't understand the importance of owning your music, the importance of doing, putting in your work, having that education, having that knowledge, coming through the motherfucking dough, and he purchased this shit right after Thriller. Michael Jackson is the biggest at this time. Still the biggest of today. Nobody has sold, nobody's done what Mike has done. Point blank period, it's never been done. It probably never will happen again. But why didn't Paul take this shit serious when Mike was standing in his face telling him, I'm going to own you. See, that's one of the, it is, how do I say it? Nobody took him serious because they watched him grow up. Nobody took him serious because his old kitty kitty and oh whatever and all of this and all of that. It was all funny games till he got cut throat and got down on you. And what made it worse was nobody forgot that Michael Jackson was black. You like I said, it don't matter how many wigs and you know back at this has a bug flying in this bitch. Back in this time, it's just like you not a you can have all the money you want to, but when you have the money and they don't expect you to be smart with the money, they didn't expect Michael Jackson to actually get down on them like this. Like, what is this nigga doing buying everything up? What was the number? 47.5 million. He purchased the Sony and ATV music. The fight was fucking crazy. Like, for real. Like, and, and just to like go back a little bit to what Paul was saying, because Paul was furious. Paul said he did not like that Michael Jackson was commercializing and making money off the Beatles music. But. It was okay when some other mythical white man was making all the money because they wasn't getting paid how they were supposed to get paid because they didn't own the music like that. Mike came through that bitch, bought everything up because he had the money. He had the money before, but he had the money. You know, Michael Jackson laughed in his face. <laughs> and this is like, this is what, if you, you got to respect this because it's just like, I'm going to get down on you. I'm going to get down on you heavy. Like, Yes, I'm going to take your music. I'm going to make more money off of it than you ever fucking will. And I'm going to laugh in your face about this shit. If you don't respect that, this might not be the game for you. Because you want to be, I'm not calling it tyrannical. That's business. Why didn't Paul McCartney and John Lennon and them take it so serious? to get to have their music in the first place. The Beatles were obviously some orchestrated group from across the pond and oh my God, we're going crazy for the boy band. Probably got down how the goddamn Frank Sinatra paying bitches to come stand in the front row and scream, you know, just no different than the shit today. But I like, I like Michael Jackson laughing in your face because that's what you deserve. Let's be honest, man. We, we don't have a, we have these wins and these wins that are bigger than life, I wish I could have caught that book. We have these wins that are bigger than life and why don't we bring those to the forefront so we can learn how to conduct business now? Now, if you're thinking he just bought the Beatles catalog, no, he bought everything Paul McCartney wrote, John Lennon, uh, Little Richard, 
who, when he bought the catalog, he gave Little Richard his music back. That was true. He gave Little Richard the rights to his music back. Another pioneer of a great genre that they tried to steal, but we bringing this shit back and restoring the feeling. Uh, Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, uh, Cher owned all her shit. Hank Williams, the fucking Rolling Stone, Eminem, w Willie Nelson, uh, Billy Joel, Elvis, Barbara Streisand. We're gonna talk about that Eminem shit probably uh, in a couple of days. But he owned all of this. He, he, genius. Like, well, I mean, what other word is there but genius? His father instilled his, that into him. Everybody he was working with, this man, like, fuck the antidotes, fuck all this twirling and dropping and dropping to get your eagle on. This man was fucking genius, and nobody could stop him. And I'm going to go out and say that they needed him to die so they can get the shit back. I don't believe none of that shit about motherfuckers being in debt, because he, because when you at that level, you got to have people operating your estate because you're not going to know what to do. You're not an expert in having that much money. Nobody was like, so these two lawyers or whoever, I think they conspired to, I'm not, I'm going to do conspiracy theory about death, but I think they lied about Michael Jackson being in debt just so they can acquire those assets back because for somebody to own half of everything that you have, or all of everything that you have. That the, especially when it's somebody that is not supposed to be a winner, aka a black man. That does something to your spirit. That does something to your soul. You're not gonna tell me walking around this bitch of somebody, if you went to work every day and you never saw a paycheck for anything that you did, that that wouldn't do something to your soul. Michael Jackson was licensing these songs. Those, those Beatles songs, every time you heard one getting played in a movie, on a commercial, anywhere, or the, the fucking ice cream truck, Michael Jackson was getting $100,000 per license for those Beatles songs. Michael Jackson, one time, just to piss the Beatles off, John Lennon and Paul McCartney, he license one of their songs for a half a million dollars. And it wasn't just him. He did it to other people too. Like if you want to play these classic songs in your movie, Michael Jackson was getting that money. If you want to, you know, have this small clip of this $100,000. So, you know, that's how musicians make money is with this publishing shit. You, you make money by owning the music and then people will pay you to play your music. Can you imagine Mike not doing no fucking work, not putting no albums out, doing all this shit, half a million dollars. One phone call is a half a million dollars because they took and played the song from somebody who you don't even like. You never like, you had your eyes on the prize from the beginning. See, John, John, uh, well, John Lennon, yeah. And Paul came through the door talking about being friends. Michael Jackson didn't have any fucking friends. And just to kind of wrap this up, because I don't want to make this too long because we do got two other ones. We're going to do Elvis and we're going to do Eminem. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's so heavy because it's like, this was the greatest business, music business acquisition ever. I think they lied and conspired so these companies or whatever can get their shit back. Now, Paul never, Paul lost the bidding war. He couldn't afford it or he pulled out and he never got the rights back. Now, people, all oh, he got, he died or whatever, so whatever, but like, he never got it back. There was a settlement, but he never got the rights back to the music, so... The record label still owns the Beatles music to this day. Paul never got it back. Couldn't buy it back. The Beatles don't own a fucking thing. I think John Lennon's still alive. Is he? Oh, no, he did. 
Um, yeah, it, it, it never came back to him. Michael Jackson is the greatest, 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 greatest businessman we had, and we should have appreciated and studied him, and we shouldn't have never let him run off and get on them drugs. Now, what's the dark side of all this? That you don't have no motherfucking friends in this shit. You, you played him for pussy, and he snuck up and took everything you had. You thought you had a friend. He came through the door with an objective. All I had to do was pat you on the shoulder and call you bro. And you trusted me enough to take your eyes off me for a second. And like you said, bought that rug up from under you. You don't have no friends in this shit. There's no friends in this shit. We do, but we at 25 years old, going crazy like that, doing business like that. It's no, they could not stop him. Mike had to die in order to be stopped. Point blank, period. Because this wasn't just a, I'm 25. Mike was buying shit up until he died. He was acquiring estate and assets up until he died. His family sold it for like 1.1 billion and they got to keep like 750 million of that. Like, if you not modeling your business after this, I don't know what you're doing. I'm going to be for real. Like, I don't know what kind of artist or what kind of entrepreneur you are because you have to be so forward thinking. He already said dignity of songwriting. Publishing and royalties is the most important thing. My music is going to get me paid forever. Dropping gold records like Alchemy. Like, just, just. Every and he he didn't buy he wasn't buying no lightweight shit. Everybody who think about these names: Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, Cher, Hank Williams, the Rolling Stones, Eminem, and well we can take him out because that was back then. But Billy Joel, Willie Nelson, Elvis, Barbara Streisand. Shout out to Little Richard for getting his shit back. A black man helping another black man. And that's how everybody should have been doing that shit. I don't know how it even got lost that the rappers wasn't seeing Michael Jackson even in the 2000s. It's getting better. It's got significantly better with people wanting to own their music. The thing is, the time to... We, we got more people fucked up than we have people doing good. This is the ultimate, like... I feel like it should be required as a black artist... Or really, it could be any artist. It doesn't really matter. But like, you should be required to study Michael Jackson. Point blank fucking period. Before you can even get into any type of music business. And, and the thing with it is, that was instilled in him young. That It was instilled. Say what the fuck you want about Joe Jackson. You wasn't there. You don't know. But he taught his kids something. All of them. Now, whatever they're doing now, it doesn't fucking matter. But he taught his children about... Because you know... Well, you don't know. But Joe Jackson was trying to get in the music business. Well, he was in the music business. And he was not done right at all. This is what made Michael Jackson so motherfucking great. Michael was the youngest. He was the easiest to teach. And the most talented. And he soaked that shit up like a sponge. His black father was there to teach him the mistakes. And everybody should have, every, everybody should be required. Every single artist should be required and should do business and model themselves like that. Chasing the quick flip, that's not gonna work for you. Taking the bag, little 20 raps, and somebody owns everything you've done, you're gonna wake up and you're not gonna have shit. And you're going to be asking, you're going to be begging. Paul McCartney begged Michael Jackson for his music back. Michael Jackson, when they was older, 30, 40 years later, not 30, 40 years. Mike was 50 when he died. So 20 years later, probably. I'm just going off the map because he was 50. He was 25 when he bought it. But a couple years before he died, Paul McCartney was like, Mike, can I get a raise? Michael Jackson laughed in his face. 
the motherfucking goat. Period. It will never get no greater. This is. That is. I don't even have. I don't even. I'm gonna be for real. And I'm so good with words. I don't even have the words to describe how mighty that is. That is. Michael Jackson was nothing short, nothing shy of a fucking titan. And that's how you do business. Cut throat. Because ain't them kitty allegations didn't even come up until, you know what? I'm going to have to say that. Come back tomorrow. We're going to do MJ and Elvis because that's what I'm going to start. That's what I'm going to talk about. That whole kitty shit. Let's wrap this up. Thank you. If you made it this far, thank you for tuning in. My name is Naeem Edwards. This is the Dark Side of Songwriting. I'm going to holler at you.